am right over this wall outside the uh, Foo Fire Studio. I'm gonna show you something amazing right here that is so incredible to see. <gasps> I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu get funky with me. Today here I am high up in Topanga Canyon on the side of this mountain. The driver here is so twisty and turny to get here. And there's a very famous movie location not too far from here that I've been to a couple times and um, I always forget how beautiful and peaceful and quiet it is up here. I've been asked many times since the death of Taylor Hawkins to do a video about Taylor Hawkins drummer for the Foo Fighters and ooh, Lizard and I always said well I'm not sure what I would do roughly regarding Taylor Hawkins because if he is if there is a grave for Taylor it has not been released publicly it's not, his family has either cremated him or buried him secret, secretly privately not secretly privately so not much I can do regarding that but then I thought of some other ideas because I did do a video a long time ago, my first couple of years of YouTube, about Studio 606, Foo Fighters Studio at headquarters up, up in Northridge. And I walked around there and I think I did um, a couple of filming locations for their video. I know they filmed, I think, Walk, which is a great song. No, Rope, White Limo. I think it was White Limo they shot around that studio. And um, so I thought, well, I'd go back, back and visit the studio. And then I thought, well, he was on MTV Cribs. And I remember that. He was on MTV Cribs a long time ago. This is, you know, MTV Cribs when there was actually that show, when MTV actually had music. So I looked up that episode and thought, well, where is that house? Because I know it was the first house he bought with it when he had a lot of money, when Taylor came into, you know, that like came into money from joining one of the most successful bands of all time. And this is the house right here that Taylor Hawkins bought. So it's not the house he was living in when he passed away. That's in Hidden Hills, which is a gated community. And I don't have any contacts at Hidden Hills, not yet. So I can't get in there. Um, didn't even bother to drive by to try because I know Hidden Hills. It's right near Calabasas and very, very uh, uh, heavy security around it. And you know, you have to know someone to be inside. But right here, the sun's on my friend right now. I've got two friends with me joining that are going to come into the video in a minute. We'll talk about Taylor, but I'll show you the house right now from a different angle because the sun is right behind it. Here we are right here. There's the house right there. Taylor Hawkins purchased this house. Now, he joined the Foo Fighters. He was actually touring with, he actually toured with Sass Jordan first, who may not be known to a lot of you American viewers, but for me as a Canadian, Sass Jordan was very, very well known. And then... He joined Alanis Morissette's touring band. And Foo Fighters and Alanis Morissette were on a few bills together. So Dave and Taylor became acquaintances. And when Dave uh, and the Foo Fighters recorded Color and the Shape, look at that, it's pretty cool. Their second album, there was a rift with their drummer, William Goldsmith. So Dave took over the drumming, William Goldsmith was fired. And at the completion of the album, they didn't have a drummer. 
So Dave called Taylor Hawkins and said, hey, man, do you know any, because, you know, they were acquaintances, and he was a good drummer. He said, do you know anybody that would be a good drummer for my band? I need a new drummer. And Taylor said, yeah, me. And sure enough, he joined the band. Dave didn't think he would leave Lance's band because Lance was huge at the time. Still is. She's Lance Morissette. She's Canada's one of Canada's songbirds. She's amazing. But Dave Grohl, uh, sorry, Taylor Hawkins said, yeah, I want to join the band and join Foo Fighters. And he's actually in their video for Monkey Wrench, which was the lead single for the album, for the Color Shape album, even though he doesn't play drums on it. But that's the house. So I believe Chad from Red Hot Chili Peppers was in that episode. I haven't had a chance to watch it. I'm going to watch it and put some clips in, hopefully, what the interior looks like. But this is Taylor Hawkins' first home. Like, first, not just Laguna Beach. He was born in Fort Worth. Then Laguna Beach is where he grew up. But this is when he kind of came into a bit of money. This is the house he bought. So I'm joined here by 909 Adventures. What's going on, guys? Britt and Jeff. And uh, you guys are Foo Fighters fans? Oh, of course. Uh, of course. And, well, we were talking about Taylor on the way over. Anything you want to add about Taylor before we go on to the next location? Uh, you know what? His actual full name is Oliver Taylor Hawkins. Right. Uh, he was born in Fort Worth, Texas, mm -hmm. and he relocated to Laguna, California, Laguna Beach, uh, with his family when he was a kid. And which, and you were telling me his son is, because I always knew his son is Shane, his 16, yeah, so 17 year old son. Yeah, Oliver Shane. Oliver Shane. Yeah. Did not know that at all. And. I mean, Shane's a drummer as well. He played at the two tribute concerts for cool. for uh, Taylor that were held here in L.A. and mm -hmm. Los and London last year. So, Taylor, uh, the Foo Fighters are going on with right. Josh Freeze as a new drummer. He's already been introduced. Mm -hmm. But Dave Grohl and him became best friends. I know. They I were know. best friends. Yep. And uh, is quoted, quoted by himself as Beavis and Butthead. Or Dumb, Dumb and Dumber. Dumber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it sounds like they had a great relationship. Yeah, and very self-deprecated by Dave, because Dave is a yeah. musical genius, so yes. there's nothing beavis or buttheady about Dave Grohl, yeah. for sure. And Taylor Hawkins, an incredible... I mean, he had side projects going. He was appearing on Slash albums. He, he did stuff with everybody. Yeah. And uh, two songs... Um, what songs were they? It was uh, Low and another instrumental was recorded in here which what song what did i say there's three oh, food fighter songs yeah I, I missed that was it was it a big song was it times like these i think it was times, times like, like these? these okay the instrumental version was recorded inside this house let me just double check that it was times like these. so it was times like these. Just, uh, and disenchanted lullaby and lull so they recorded the instrumentals here inside the house now talk about his death and that's uh, like i said when he died i got Tons of people reach out to me if I'm going to do a video about Taylor. I'm just like, I like, yeah. he died in Columbia. I had a Four Seasons Hotel. I can't get down to Columbia. And, well, <laughs> it's a little far. And it's a little out of my budget to do Columbia. Uh, something I would like to do one day. And, uh, but he was found on, uh, uh, he was complaining of chest pains just, just before a show. Like they were in Bogota, Columbia. They were going to do a show. He was complaining of chest pains. So emergency personnel came up to his uh, room. And he was unresponsive when they performed CPR, and he had passed away. Oh wow! Oh, wow. So it's cardiac arrest. Yeah. Um, and there, was, they did a urine test the next day of the autopsy. There was over ten substances found in his body. Oh dang! Yeah. So he had a, a, a heart twice the size of what it should be. Mm. He had a very large heart. So uh, it's kind of inconclusive of what, you know, it was cardiac arrest. His right. heart, but what caused it? Well. 10 substances and he did he had substance abuse issues in the past yeah. it was and well documented he was open about it yep and he was clean for a very very long time mm -hmm. and then but he had o opioids thc and then eight other so but there was i mean he was doing a big they were doing Foo fighters do stadiums like yeah. they're no yeah. they're not you know so they were doing yep. a huge show in columbia so after he passed away the fans surrounded this hotel in you know, four seasons playing his, their music and all like candles everywhere and then i guess the foo fighters had their big concerts as a way for the fa is it you know for mm -hmm. the fans to say goodbye to taylor right and it's a tribute to taylor and for the foo fighters themselves and if you've been watching any clips of their latest stuff they have a couple of songs on the new album that sound very much like they're written for taylor and some of them dave can't even get through you know you know he is you know like the whole band lost they didn't just lose a bandmate they lost yeah. a friend and then of course his wife right. 
his family, his children. Yeah. Very, very tragic. He was so loved. And it also, what I was thinking was, one thing is, he's one of those guys, you, you don't see it happen too often. You see, like, Mick and Keith. I said Keith, because, like, you know, Keith. I call him that. Keith Richards. You see that Bono in the Edge, you know, uh, Robert Plant, Jimmy Page. You see the, the lead singer and the guitarist. They become the faces. If right. it's only the some bands, that, like, off, off the top of Maroon 5, you know, or yeah. R.E.M., like the lead singer is the face. Right. You don't know really maybe some of the other band members. Right. It's very rare that the lead singer and the drummer become the face of the band. Yeah, that's right. Especially since Dave Grohl was in... The drummer. Yeah, and in the biggest band of all time before, yeah. like one of the... Nirvana. Exactly. But Taylor Hawkins has such a big personality. Mm-hmm. Him and... He became one... Like, if it was a drummer for another huge band, I don't think... Yeah, he would just blend into the background, like you, most drummers do. Yeah, and, and people would be upset at the death, but Taylor Hawkins hit everybody hard because he always yeah. had that big smile. And he was yeah. he was immensely big talented. Presence. Yeah, you know? he came out and did uh, uh, "Somebody to Love" all the time. Mm-hmm. He did vocals yeah. on a few Foo Fire songs, a few yep. B sides. Yeah, I actually saw Foo Fighters on the first tour, and I always just say I saw them on the first show because uh, they did a. I love love the first album. The self-titled Foo Fighters album, yeah, and they did two shows in Toronto over the course of about eight months. So I always told people I was at the first one. Just found out recently I was actually at the second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was always like I went to the first show they ever did in Toronto, but it was the second yeah. one. I looked up the dates and I was like, oh, well, but it was still amazing. It was before Taylor was in the band, but one of the best experiences of my life seeing Foo right. Fighters before they were famous in a yeah. four hundred place club or four hundred people club. Yeah. Called Masonic I mean, Temple. It, it looks like they put on a great show. Oh, yeah, I've seen them cu- countless times. I've yeah. seen them a few times since, and amazing. The first show always will live with me because it was, like I said, Masonic Temple, right at Young and uh, Davenport, Young and you know, Young mm-hmm. and Davenport in Toronto, and um, tiny little venue. But I've seen them in big places since, and right here, this was the house yeah. that Taylor Hawkins bought. Here, let's show you again. So that's it right there. That's Taylor's home. Now, he does not live here anymore. Like I said, they moved to Hidden Hills. And I believe that's the house where his family still lives. I'm not completely sure if they still live at Hidden Hills. But I'm almost 100% sure that that's where they moved to. This guy's having the time of his life. And there's the house. Right there. Bit of sun blocking. There we go. All right, Jeff, you ready yes. to go? And Britt, who's right over in front of us, are you ready to go see Foo Fighters headquarters? Yeah, I'm excited. I've Let's seen this place it before. It, where are you? <laughs> I'm like Foo Fighters it. headquarters. <laughs> this is amazing. I've been there before. There's not much to see. There's, apparently, there's a mural now outside, and um, yeah, they filmed some videos around the area. And for me, I can never. They haven't recorded there in a long time, apparently, but they still own the building. It's still the Foo Fighters headquarters. And we're gonna go there right now. It's a short drive north. See you guys there. Let's go. That's probably what was here before. They just don't it up. Yeah, they're going to leave that up to turn. But everybody knows where it is. We're standing outside of Studio 606 right here. There it is behind me. That's the Foo Fighters headquarters. So uh, they do a live streaming. Uh, they just live stream some new album from there. Uh, it's they haven't recorded a full album in there for a while I think over, over a decade but they did live streaming for um, like I said the latest album and then uh, Sky's Neighborhood for BBC they did it from here and they've done a lot of things what's up yeah, and, uh, so guys also the video I just showed you White Limo yes which was from Wasting Light and Lemmy is driving a limo all around and, and we just drove I mean this is crazy that it's right in this area right like yeah it's just I a, know it's like in the middle of nowhere you would right never in think. The high in the valley you never think that, that this building is like the headquarters for one of the world's biggest bands which exactly. is right here but he's driving that white limo as named after the song he's driving a limo Lemmy from Motorhead all all the way around the streets he picks up the Foo Fighters Taylor Dave and the white limo that he drove is here it's here we can see it take a look just take a walk the windows are all blacked out so you can't see a thing inside 
and not putting this on blast everybody if you go a simple Google search will show you and it's kind of well known I've been here before this type of place I never get tired of looking at I love recording studios and band headquarters stuff like that but if you look right over this big barbed wire fence got to be careful that's the limo take a look I had read before that they still owned it that they bought it for the video and there it is you can tell that's a limo that's exactly it and if you look here there's a rip that's a white part of the limo that is the white limo right there so look in uh, see what I can show you again just do not want to burn myself oh just touch the barbed wire there's a good shot oh so that's the one that they're driving around and around and they just doubled the streets if you look if you watch the video closely they pass let me pull this out easily they pass this building a few times and this building behind Brit right here see in the background of the video all filmed around right up and down these streets back and forth back and forth I have a feeling they probably you know let me you know he liked to drink maybe they just yeah, you know sure. and just, I don't think he was drinking and driving or saying you know maybe just yeah. keep it to the streets keep it to the small streets yeah so it's, you know, easy, easy little video to do, fun. But yeah, this is the Food Fighters headquarters. Wow. Do we walk, let's walk around this side, see what's down around here. Yeah, gentleman uh, just saying hi to us really right over there was just telling us Make sure you go all the way around to see the mural. And I mentioned the mural earlier, and then I've totally forgot because I got excited about the limo. <laughs> <laughs> but the mural's here. A lot of beeping as we walk by. <laughs> no mural here. Oh, we're really around the back of it now. I've never been up this side of it before. Oh, wow, there's Lemmy. Look at that. That's wild. And it looks like that's the front entrance right there. Maybe, possibly, I mean, oh yeah, look, there's a little place to sit there. I mean, it's a pretty big building, pretty big yeah, complex. Yeah. So I'm not sure where the front entrance is. There's a side entrance we showed, but there's that Lemmy mural. That is wild. Is that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a fire, a barbecue? Yeah, that's a barbecue. I'm talking about over there with a fire pit and chairs. Yeah, because Dave Grohl loves to barbecue. That's so his thing. Oh, yeah, that's his thing. Oh, that is a barbecue. Yeah. That's like that a smoker. That's a smoker. That's what he does. He takes it around to various places. That's Dave Grohl's smoker. He takes it around, he cooks for hundreds of people. That's really cool. And at concerts and festivals, he'll be the guy cooking, barbecuing. And a friend of mine, Sean Clark, malfunction, he said that he was at some sort of function and Dave Grohl showed up with his smoker. And it took about 14 hours before he, Dave Grohl felt the food was ready. Oh, wow. And Dave, But Sean and his girlfriend waited around and he said it was some of the best barbecue he ever had. Oh, that's awesome. But it took him all day to wait because Dave Grohl was like, no, it's not ready, it's not ready. More barbecues. That's a, another smoker, smoker, that big, or the square one back there against the wall. Wow. I love it. So cool. Yeah, it is cool. Knowing that's Dave, one of Dave Grohl's smokers. And as you can see, you're not getting in, people. Neither am I. I'm surprised there's not anything else written here for Taylor on the walls. Even this little building on the side, I don't know what, it's such a weird complex. Heavily barbed wire, because there's a lot of equipment in there, a lot of instruments. Wow. 
Okay, I stand corrected. I believe this would be the entrance right here. Look at this. That looks more, because they'd park in there. That, that's, a, that's a front entrance, if I've ever seen one. For sure. It's gonna beep again as we walk by. Yep. Okay. We're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> you hear the beeping. I don't know if you guys can hear it. But yeah, that's uh, letting you know. They know we're out here. That's the back of the limo right there. All right, guys. So we did a little Foo Fighters um, excursion. Yeah. And of course, the video was about Taylor. I, uh, like I said, there's not much other than going to Columbia at some point, or uh, if grave details are released, I'll visit Taylor Hawkins' grave. I love Food Fighters. I love Taylor Hawkins. Yeah. You love Taylor Hawkins. So many yeah. people have asked me to do something. I hope it's good. I uh, hope his family's coping. They're never going to recover. Yeah, you, you never will. No. Regardless of whether he's famous or not, you don't recover when you're, you know, a 50 year old passes away, a dad, exactly. you know? And that smile, we're always going to remember it. Love you, Taylor Hawkins. Rest in peace. Thanks for coming along, guys. Thank Bye. you for having us. Peace. Out. Out. And just be, while I'm ending the video, I was just informed by a very good source, i.e. a neighbor, that the band is in there right now. He said he's seen them coming and going all day. That's wild. He said the uh, cars are right on the other side. That gate opens and closes. And the band's parked. I can't get over that fence to show you any cars but yeah Foo Fighters are in there right now guys just told me thanks man appreciate that yeah that's wild sky is a neighborhood